Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. Um, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com and um, I've just wanted to come back to this issue concerning uh, the knowledge of Jesus um, because there are some issues that need to be addressed that I think are important and um, if we turn to uh, Mark 13.32 there's a video here on Deo Volente Deo Volente D-E-O Volente V-O-L-E-N-T-E -E. It's hang How can Jesus be God if he didn't know the day of the last hour? Excellent video, I would encourage you to go and listen to that So if we turn to Mark 13 uh, 32 Mark 13 32 and it says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angel which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So the Muslims will use this, they'll get you in what is called the, I call it the Islamic vice. And I made a video, an hour or so video long, about this issue, about the Islamic vice. So what the Muslims do, they will get a passage, they will isolate the passage, and they will ask you a question and get you into their Islamic vice. And I've talked about that, about not getting into the Islamic vice. So go and watch the hour-long video, the Islamic vice. And I touch upon this passage. And I give uh, two possible ways of dealing with this passage. But I just want to go a little bit further and talk about a few issues that are important. So it says here, but at that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son but the Father. Now the Greek word knoweth there is not the idea of knowledge and knowing all things, like knowledge. The Greek word there, if you turn to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2, the Greek word can also have the idea of reveal okay so the word know can have also the idea of knowledge as in knowing everything or a deep knowledge or it can have the idea of reveal so if you turn to um, 2 Cor 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2 it says for I've determined that not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified well Paul is saying he doesn't he's not saying he doesn't know anything else but you could you could translate that and change that to uh, I determined not to reveal anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified all right I mean, there's more to the Greek than that, but I'm just giving you some, some pointers there. So when it says, uh, but the day and the hour knoweth no man, it's, it's saying, what it's saying there is, it's not to be revealed, the, 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 it basically saying it's not to be revealed only by the Father. All right? Um so that would be consistent with our trinitarian beliefs we believe that there is the father son and the holy spirit they are one but each one of the trinity has a certain role you know the father plans salvation the son comes to accomplish salvation the holy spirit uh, reveals salvation so there are there, there is um a divine economy within the trinity and so the divine economy here is the father is the one that reveals um, the last hour as it were the last day all right it reveals it um, and it's his prerogative and we would under and if we looked at the wedding situation of the wedding analogy which we looked at before that would back that information up if we look at um, you know that in the wedding it was the father's prerogative uh, to say when when the wedding was going to be all right? everybody knew when the wedding was going to be but it, officially he had the right to state that uh, officially you know Jesus in this passage knows uh, what's happening 
going to happen in the end times. He actually knows it. And the and if you look at the passage, uh, and in the Matthew passage, the emphasis, the main emphasis on the passage, the whole chapter, is on the fact that the individual people don't know. All right? Um, so the emphasis there is, is saying, look, the prerogative of revealing the last day, the last hour, is the Father's. It doesn't mean to say the Son doesn't like know, because the Son knows. Uh, if you read the passage, the Son knows like there's, what's it going to be like at the end in, in the last days. He actually tells us, so he knows. All right. So it, this Greek word "know" uh, doesn't necessarily mean deep like knowledge. It can also about be about revealing. All right. Now that's not my research, that's the research from De Deo Valente, how can Jesus be God if he didn't know the day of the last hour? And also a friend of mine who knows Greek, who, who, who's proficient in Greek, uh, who's uh, a, a good friend of mine, he's kind of helped me to understand that. So, so that is a very helpful way of understanding that passage and there's more to it. We're actually doing research and studying at the moment and thinking about it so we'll make some more videos on this in the future and give you some more insight into the passage but what we're finding as we study the text we we get uh, better answers than just letting the Muslims isolate a text and put us in their vice now the other thing as well if the Muslims bring up this passage you can get them on this it says but of the day and the hour knoweth no man not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. You can get the Muslims on this passage by saying, wait a minute, before we answer whether the Son knows or not, do you agree that this passage is inspired or the Word of God? If they say no, then you can call them out on their bias. And you say, well, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? And that is the question, because look where it says, neither the Son but the Father. So Jesus is saying he is the Son of God there. He is the Son of the Father. So you could call him out on that and say, wait a minute, Jesus gives his divine identity as the Son of God. Do you agree with that? He's, he's implying it here. You know, so before we even get to knowledge, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? You know? So you can corner the Muslim by pointing out that he says, neither the Son. And you can say, wait, wait a minute, do you agree that Jesus is the Son of God? Because he's saying he, he is. Alright? And he's and Jesus is making himself different from the angels and different from everybody else. He's saying that he's the special Son here. So that's a question that you can push back to the Muslims. Now the next point I want to make is very, very important. That... There is a danger with Christian apologists. I won't name the names, but there are some top reformed and evangelical apologists uh, that are in danger and have, and have dangerously moved over to kenosis theology. All right? And I, and I say this with greatest respect. There are people that I respect highly, and I'm not going to mention the names. I don't want to embarrass them, but... If you know any famous reformed and evangelical apologists, you need to give them this video because I don't say this lightly. But there is there is a danger where people who have moved into kenosis theology, and kenosis theology was a heretical theology in the 19th century, and, and basically it said that in order to answer this question about the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Christ, that he didn't know certain things, what they've done is to answer and square the problem of Jesus being divine and, and, and God and, and man. They've come up with, they, they've, the Kenosis theology is that Jesus was div divested of his divine attributes. That, he, that the, the knowledge of God was limited within Jesus. Now that's heretical. That's an heretical teaching. That's not true. Now they go to the passage Philippians chapter 2 where it says he made himself of no reputation um, but the, 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 the point there is 
It's not about knowledge. It's about the divinity of God coming down in human flesh and coming as a servant. That's what he's talking about, that Jesus becomes the eternal God, the Son, becomes servant, becomes a servant. And as a servant, he relates to the Father as a servant. All right? But it doesn't say anything about the divine attributes were stripped or limited. Because if you go to the creeds, if you go to the ancient creeds, Nicaea, uh, Chalcedon, and if you go to any of the great uh, creeds of the past like that, it's very clear that Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. For example, in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14, the Word became flesh. It's very clear that Jesus is God 100%. And he became a man. All right? So he's 100% God, 100% man. But what Kenosis theology and what theologians in history have tried to do is they've tried to go beyond the creeds, beyond what the creeds have said. The creeds clearly state that Christ is 100% God, 100% man, and that he's two natures in one person. Now this issue of one person is the problem. It's because scripture gives us data about him being God, data about Jesus being man, and brings it together and says he's one person. But some theologians have tried to go beyond the definition of person. Kind of like physics. In physics, people can go from the quant quantum level right into the quarks. But then some people might want to go beyond the quarks and beyond that, beyond whatever is beyond the quarks and beyond, and try to go deeper and deeper. But it, there comes a point, even in physics, there is the boundary of the unknowable. There is a mystery. And we have to leave it at that. But some theologians want to go beyond the definitions of the creeds of Jesus being two natures in one person and try to square the problem of how can he be God and know and then not know at the same time. And they go, try to go beyond uh, the creeds and, 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 and go right down to, as it were, to the quantum level of the psyche of the Lord Jesus. And you can't do that. The scripture has not given us warrant for that. Scripture has just given us ontological language that in the being of Christ, ontological means being, so gives us knowledge of Christ being being, so in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. That is the being of God, and tells us that Christ is God in his being. And then you have language that is not only ontological, but is functional. That Jesus says, I do what the Father tells me. That's functional language. And we get these two types of language, and this is the information that God has seen fit to give us about Jesus Christ. And so, Paul says, great is the mystery of godliness. And there is a mystery here, that we cannot go beyond that mystery. So, when we come to a passage like this, we have to be careful. Some Reformed theologians and ev Evangelical theologians, in order to square the fact that Jesus is God and man, seems to know but not know. They've slipped into the kenosis theology, where unwittingly they're saying that Jesus was divested of his divine attributes. No, he was not. He was 100% God and 100% man. That is the creeds. That is the biblical data. All right? That you can't fully understand how he can know and not know is beyond your mind it's a mystery all right but he knew so you you don't fully understand how the divine relates to the human and the human and divine and here what he's saying is in his office in the office of servant it is the divine prerogative of the father to reveal the last day but that is not to say that jesus doesn't know everything in this passage all right because the word know here is in rel relation to reveal all right so a couple of th thoughts number one when the muslims come to you and get you in advice about this passage ask them wait a minute before we ask the issue of knowledge do you it says son do you believe jesus is the son of god because it's saying here he is the son of god second you remember to throw a question to the muslim wait a minute we don't agree with your quran it's not biblical, there's contradictions in it. We're not using your Quran to understand the Bible. Third, what is the Greek word for know? It's not about knowing all knowledge, it's about reveal, right? 
Fourth, let's look at our biblical theology. What does the Bible teach? And five, we don't try to do philosophy and cloak it with biblical language like some reformed theologians and evangelicals have unwittingly, they've unwittingly subtly moved into kenosis theology yes it says philippians 2 he made himself of no reputation yes it says that he humbled himself but it does not say he divested himself stripped himself of his divine attributes it does not say that that is not what it's saying it's saying no he humbled himself became of no reputation he became a servant that's different than saying he stripped himself of his of his divine knowledge, which is heretical, really. And 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 so um, some of the reformed theologians and some evangelical theologians uh, have moved subtly, very very subtly, into the kenosis camp without realizing it. So just remember that, okay. Read uh, Athanasius uh, on the Incarnation. Read the uh, the, uh, the Nicaea Creed. Read the Chalcedonian Creed. Read the Cappadocian Fathers. And then, when you've done that, go to Calvin, John Calvin. Read it, what he says. Go to uh, Augustine on the Trinity. Go to uh, the great Reformed creeds like the Westminster Confession and um, other great Reformed West uh, Confessions and read them and you will find that they clearly state that Jesus is 100% God and 100% man and nowhere in those creeds will it say he was divested of his divine attributes. I defy anybody to find that anywhere. But what you will find is they will say he's 100% God, 100% man, two natures in one person. And the Philippians chapter 2 is a very good passage to help us to understand that in his sonship it's a servant is relating to the father and that explains a lot of things why uh, Jesus um, G how Jesus related to, to the father uh, while on earth okay so I hope that's helped we're going to do some more research more thinking on it and give you some more help on this passage but I hope that's a help I hope that 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 is a help to you and I uh, hope it's a blessing to you. Thank you for listening. God bless.